Our promise was that when this happened, we're going to find a way to, to, de to deal with this. On the other hand, I've been an economic development director in my community uh, for about 18 years. I've had community meetings like this dealing with all migration. I've had communities like this how we bring our kids back. I've had community meetings like this where we get the money to fund our schools. And what are we going to do about closing our schools? So, what I see is an opportunity, and my wife always says, which just knock that damn bluebird off your shoulders. She tells me that all the time. But if we're going to be doing this, you're going to live in your communities, then you're going to have to face up the fact that you've got to take control of this thing. But that's going to be my message to you today. Um, oil can be a part of your economic foundation. It can be a good foundation for agriculture. Uh, I, I personally am involved in it, not from a mineral owner's right, uh, area as much as I am. I happen to have two of my children who move back to the community uh, who would never would have come back to our community. I have good jobs. One works for Marathon, one works for Calvert. Uh, they build new houses in our community. Their kids are going to go to school there, and I expect those people will be there for work. Uh, they'll, they'll probably retire there. I also went to college for working in the oil field. So I'm presenting to you the fact that we may have oversold sometimes how bad this is to you. Um, I, I know you're going to work with your economic developers and all the challenges you have in your communities. I, my challenge to you is find a way to make something out of this and recognize that those impacts that you just talked about are real. But uh, we just heard yesterday, for example, that 80%, by the end of this year, 80% of the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota will be held by production. What that means is they'll have their first well in, they'll actually hold uh, production. They're going to come back in, they're going to, the next level of production in those fields will be what they think will be more economical and it might not be as frenzied as this. So, I think you are in a better position than Montreal, McKenzie, uh, maybe Dunn. But Montreal, McKenzie, and Williams, you know, right in the heart of this thing, it came so fast. They started building up, if you think about it, an economic decline. The industry shut down for a while, and the last two years have been as bad as what they told you about. So my challenge to you today is now, you are on the fringe of this thing. And to be fair, I can't imagine that you're possibly going to get hit the way these communities have. So I see opportunity for you where we probably had problems. So uh, take note. And uh, probably listen to the 10 things we wish we would remember. Most of these that I'm going to show you are related to the city. One of the things uh, uh, Commissioner Boucher told you stop selling sweat city on lots. I remember in Rock City, City, we even knew this. We knew this uh, because we, the city owned these lots, they didn't sell them for 100 bucks. Well, right now, uh, we would have been able to have industrial and residential. Uh, Keep in mind, five years ago, even five years ago, these leases were worth hardly anything, so it's a pretty fast process. So if you've got something out here that's got a water, sewer, gutter, street investment, keep in mind that if you're going to buy a lot out of the oil country right now, it will probably cost you about $40,000, but I see some engineering firms here. They'll tell you that it costs about $40,000 to develop a lot. Isn't that right? I mean, that's a, that's a figure that if you're gonna if you're gonna do a new city lot, it'll cost you forty grand to do it. So the days of buying a ten thousand dollar lot are gone. So I would say that up here right now, if I were you in your small communities, I'd find a place to uh, set up an industrial park, I'd find a place to put your temporary housing, and I would isolate some some units for uh, to, to use for development because developers are looking at doing that. Um, um Something we did, a lot of these things I'm telling you about, we didn't get done. Purchase adjoining land for future housing and industrial development. I remember that uh, that we could have actually picked up some adjoining land for our community. Uh, yeah, we were just trying to confine some of that to the industrial side of it. We didn't get that done. I would recommend that you do that. Uh, I don't think there's a community out in oil country that now doesn't wish they would have bought, you know, whatever that. And, and pay the price for it. I don't expect we'll give it to you. But that way you can bring in those companies. You can, you can have trucking companies first that will want to come to your community. You'll have service countries and companies that will want to come to your community. You put water and sewer into those industrial lots. You're not going to be asked to, to send it all over the country and you're not, you've got to basically quantify where you're putting that. Um, a thing that I think is really important, and we, uh, we went to the state for this, 
a couple of years ago here. We saw this coming. I, I wasn't, I kind of went kicking and screaming into the planning thing. We did go to the Department of Commerce a couple of years ago and we asked for uh, some money to help us with the planning. So what we found out is that we don't have the technical expertise in these communities to, you know, I'm not a housing expert. I'm not, in fact, I'm not an expert on anything, but I know experts. They do cost money. Uh, so we went to state and asked for some money to develop some plans. You need to get you a plan. And generally, engineering firms will do this for you. Um, what it basically does, it sets up a plan for where you're going to run your water, where you're going to run your sewer, where you're going to run your roads. Um, uh, and over a five or ten year plan, this is our Bible now today. Um, McKinsey County, by doing that plan, we're able to go back to the state. We're dealing, we're going on about a twelve and a half million dollar project to run uh, sewer lines north, south, east, and west. And um, as of yesterday, we have about twelve hundred new housing units that will go in along that sewer line. So we found out from the city of Fargo, for example, that uh, housing chases infrastructure. So. Uh, we did get some of that money back and we're pretty happy with that. Now, we spent three years um, struggling to get that housing, but I think some of the problems are going to happen. You can define as your city where that stuff's going to go based on what I, what I just showed you there. So anyway, if you're, I would recommend if you, the other thing that I haven't talked about here, something nobody's talked about, talk to the North Dakota Petroleum Council. Talk to your industrial commission. The, the numbers don't lie under you. They're still looking at these fringes. We did have a bit of a heads up on this thing, uh, and because we've been doing this for quite a while, uh, uh, if they're telling you that it's coming this way, if you're getting some leasing happening up here, then you need to assume that there's going to be some impact. And so uh, don't talk to your neighbors and don't talk to the people in the coffee shop. Go get the information. North Dakota Industrial Commission has very, very good information on what's happening in the community. You also may have a thing to remember about the Bakken. McKinsey County is one of those areas that's actually produced in every pay zone that there is in North Dakota. So uh, I think there's uh, nine, nine or twelve paying zones in our in our community that we've actually taken a look of. So maybe you don't do the Bakken here, maybe you don't do the Tyler here, maybe you don't do the Red River, Duke Road, Madison, all those Bird uh, River, Red River, those are all producing formations and technology is driven on this. So I would expect that something's going to happen at some point. Plan for that infrastructure, I uh, already told you about that. Uh, it's not hard. We did do the territorial zoning. All this stuff we did too late, by the way. McKinsey County is the last county in the state of North Dakota that actually uh, developed a land use plan. We just did that in January. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're the land of uh, private property rights that nobody's going to tell me who I can sell my land to. I get that, I understand that. It didn't matter until it really started impacting people. And our neighbors started putting moratoriums on man camps and they all moved over to our communities. <laughs> so, you know, it really did happen and it actually needed to happen. So, but again, I'm a local control guy. Basically, that just says, you come here, but you better have a plan. If you're going to do one of those camps that Don showed you, you better tell us what you're going to do with your sewer, and you better tell us what you're going to do with your water, and you better have a number on your units so our volunteer fire department can get to you or our animals can get to you when you're having a heart attack or all those type of things. Quite frankly, the good companies that we're seeing have no problem with that. No problem whatsoever. So again, it's back to taking control. Temporary housing. Um, we were probably a little easy on it at the beginning. Uh, you know, we, we, we see ourselves as a pro-business community. Uh, again, I even see that, you know, this, this uh, oil industry for us is about jobs more than it is anything else. I work for a job development authority, people got to work. If you can work in this country, I believe you can solve the rest of your problems. That's my own, my own opinion. So you got to find a way to let people work. We didn't have enough housing for them. Uh, industry wanted housing for them. They just kind of still showed up right now. We pushed industry pretty hard to say, that's not our problem. If you need a thousand workers, McKinsey County is not going to go build you housing units, and I expect that's pretty much how it goes away. By doing that, it's taken us a while, we've had all this kind of influx of temporary housing. So, I think Montreal County and uh, some of the counties around us, Williams County, saw that uh, business as usual just doesn't work. That 
although you, you might like industry, they will push you as far as you can push you, and you are county governments, you're city governments, you can't take control of that. So again, it doesn't say, and I would think even those counties would say that the, the uh, moratoriums on camps weren't necessarily to say you can't do this. They were saying we need time to catch up. Isn't that that's fair enough to say that that, that you've got to find a way to do this because you need time to catch up. Now, you, if you go on Highway 85 from Alexander to Watkins City, you'll see the result of a community, my community, and I'm pretty proud of Casey County, we didn't have the ability to control that. And there's very few acres that are not torn up on Highway 85. People are scrambling to get in anything they can before uh, our land use plan comes in. So, um, reality hits us, I guess. Now, maybe that's okay. Actually, I don't have a problem with it, except we have been there before. You know, if you don't have a good plan, you, you run a bunch of temporary housing and you put a bunch of electrical pedestals up there, some, some uh, pipe on the ground. Uh, at at two three thousand dollars a month, you get your money out of that in about three years. Those people in those camps mostly are construction workers. We know they don't plan on living there forever. Uh, when they leave, those close down. We have a lot of those back in taxes. So that's the thing you want to make sure. In my mind, I don't know if you guys do that, but if you're going to do temporary stuff, I think you should be bonded. They should be bonded. The city of Canada. county doesn't want that tag. And if you're talking about uh, <coughs> truck parking areas, for example, if you park 150 or 200 <coughs> diesel rigs in one spot, if you've ever been involved with trying to find that piece of property that's had a lot of trucks on it, that becomes potentially toxic. Piece of real estate for you if they leave. And you can't sell it without their income. So you need to make sure that you have that covered. And if they can do that, they'll, they'll have a, a plan for rehabbing that property. And they'll do it. The companies will do it without question. So temporary housing in the same way. I would also say, though, on a personal note, I think we've both sold some of this. Uh, some of the finest people I've met uh, are people coming through our community that God bless them and just want to work. And uh, remember that we're all uh, land immigrants, and I, I, I caution you to not think that everybody that you see is out to, to take your, your money. But you, as a community, you have to try to have them have a decent place to live as well. The point that our city makes though, is that if you don't force some permanent housing, if you do have kind of temporary housing, you don't force an investment into the companies that are needing those workers. Um, one of the proudest things I'm most proud of is in Watford City, Power Fuels, and uh, came in from Radiant Homes, and they built, uh, last summer, they built six 42 foot plexes. Uh, they paid for the land, there was no subsidy to it, we got the land <coughs> sewer to Six 42 plexes just for the rest of their truck drivers. Uh, their plan includes up to a thousand units there that's paid for by, by, uh, by private companies. Bottom line is, they understand, their first people came in, I'll give you a little story about power fuels. Power fuels came in, ramped up so fast, they didn't have enough drivers, went out and started recruiting, went and recruited in Michigan. Um, well, Michigan drivers didn't work out very well in Western North Carolina. Yeah, that's not good to put everybody in there, but they just did okay? Um, but they were here temporarily, they owned homes back in Michigan, they couldn't buy a house in Watford City. What were they going to do? Uh, they went to those temporary camps, Power fuels said that doesn't work, those guys are not sleeping at night, they're not your drivers. Uh, they went in and bought, I think, 120 new 14 by 70 mobile homes. The company themselves and put their people into those mobile homes. Then they went out to Kalispell, Montana, where the lumber industry died. They required recruiting 200 workers from Kalispell or truck drivers out of the lumber industry, and those people knew how to drive in Western Minnesota. Um, there's a seriously, industry needs to hire drivers and not driving and stuff too. We got all industry responsible. Anyway, they lived in those homes for a while, wanted to bring their families back. And uh, then last year, I think Power Fuels and Smart Jobs, who's a local person who owns that company, actually came back in and said, okay, we're going to invest, we're going to be here for a while. These are nice two and three bedroom, real nice apartment units um, with garages. They were leased for about $1,100 to $1,200 a month. And so, 46, 42 bucks are completed right now. And then uh, it looks like three different oil companies are going to do their corporate offices there. And they'll fill those other houses. That's a thousand units in a town that, uh, 
the last census had 1,600 people. So that's where you want to be. You want to get past that temporary stuff to permanent stuff. If you don't allow everybody to do temporary, you force kids to do some permanent. That, that's our, I, I think that's fair to say. But you, if you're going to do temporary, then make some rules that they're not going to impact everybody. The planning staff, um, yeah, I'll say about that. You know, we'll, we'll tell you that, that we did do that, and, uh, and uh, any county kind of commission knows that Kinsey County is one of the most conservative counties there is about uh, property rights, and nobody can tell them what to do about it. We came late to the game on that, and, and we know better. Um, one of the main things I say is it's a law enforcement thing. We talked about, uh, and, and I think the state, especially this last special session, they came back through with some help for uh, with high patrol. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to tell your story three or four times, but all of these issues can be resolved if you have enough enforcement. Now, you can put whatever kind of rules you want as a county and the county will, but you can't enforce it and it costs to enforce. Be prepared, prepared to uh, do this enforcement. Um, the, the district court. Here's an example of McKenzie County. This is what I went through. I remember specifically when they moved our district court judges away from our county. The district court judge there, everybody was leaving, we didn't have enough court cases. Um, and we fought it tooth and nail. Of course, today, if you actually were in the McKenzie County Courthouse, we hold court two days a month. And you can't get into the courthouse those two days. So, you know, we're playing catch up on that. We've got six, six, six to seven thousand uh, new people living in our community, of uh, which, let's say, two percent of them are total tools. And, you know, they just came up here to get in trouble, and they're in our court system, and we're only meeting and court twice a month with my district judges out there. So the state's gonna have to catch up on those things. But you gotta arrest it first and you gotta take control of your community and say that we're, we're not doing those things here. So we actually um, I think the county hired seven new deputies. We had to pull in mobile homes to uh, house those deputies. Fortunately what we don't realize all the rest is it's not hard to get people to come work in your communities if you have housing for them. Because nobody else in this country is working there. Um, this is something that we feel really strongly about, and I know Wilson feels strongly about that, and Dickinson does, and is that the last time around, we went ahead and we bonded out, uh, and then we're still getting pushed to do it by developers, bond out your community to do special assessments uh, to pay for the infrastructure. I just, it doesn't work. And we're having, but, but what the results? of that is your cost of housing go way up. But that's just how it has to be. Uh, you, you're you're going to be the ones, five years from now, ten years from now, are going to pay the taxes on this property that doesn't get properly filled. So make sure you've got developers to come in there to do the infrastructure, and you can put it in a lot of prices, and that's just how it's going to be. The day of the $500 a month rent is gone. That's gone all over the country. Uh, the day of the Hundred thousand dollar or the hundred dollar square foot home is gone. Um, but keep in mind that North Dakota's or McKinsey County's average wage, uh, and I think Wilson's average wage is one of the highest in the United States. The average wage. So people didn't know. The next thing is though, then you have to be prepared to uh, take care of those people that are not working in the oil industry. That's our biggest challenge right now. And I see Stanley and some of the other communities have actually done that with teachers. That's probably where you're going to have to come in with your state program. You're going to have to come in with your community programs because you do have to hire policemen. You do have to hire CNAs. You do have to hire um, anybody that doesn't work in the oil field. And they're not going to be able to afford oil field wages. And uh, if you lose your basic services in your community, you don't have anything else going for you. So that's a challenge. That's the biggest challenge for us right now. The, the new program that the state legislature passed for the ability to do uh, North Dakota tax financing using that North Dakota uh, property tax exemption to fund programs. Um, go to your regional council, go to your housing developers. That's a real good program. There's a lot of money available for people looking at building affordable housing. And if I were you, I'd be doing that in these communities anyway, because your community's needed. If you're like ours were, your, your stock is getting old anyway. You need to take care of your senior, senior citizens anyway. You need to take care of those people who are not earning what they're looking for. Um, we think you've got to invest in 
things that make your community a joy to live in. You know, if you have, a, we think we're going to keep about 20% of the people that we see in our community, 20 to 30 percent of our community. This is what we learn, a lesson we learn. If you see a thousand people out there, do not expect that they all live in your community. It's not. They didn't wake up in the morning in Brownsville, Texas, and say, "Gee, I hope I, hope I can come live in North Dakota." That's not. They, they want a job. They'll be there until the job is gone. They're like they do this all the time. They build power plants, they build gas plants, they build pipelines all over the United States. They're not coming to live in your community full time. But those industries do require support. Uh, example, uh, one oak gas plant that just got built out there. Took 2,500 workers to build. So a lot of those people you saw around Rockford City this year were building a gas plant infrastructure. 60 full time jobs was taken. So we built for the 60. And we think industry needs to build for those other 2,100. But if they're going to live there and bring their families, they want a wellness center, they want uh, walking paths, they want a good hospital, they want a good school, and that's the kind of things that you really, that you really have to invest in now. So for McKinsey County, when people ask me, what's going to happen on all those ways? Here's what's going to happen. I hope to have a regional water distribution system for my community that's paid for. I hope to have a new school that's paid for. I hope to have uh, 1,500 to 2,000, up to 3,000 new homes that are in, that are not financed with public financing. I, I hope to not have increased our tax base, and I really hope that uh, we get a new school and hospital and like that. So if you're smart, realize that 30 years means nothing in the oil industry. All your businesses are going to be financed in 5 to 10 years. Uh, if you're doing business plans and banking, there's a reason that they're trying to pay these things out. If 80% of this oil field uh, is, is being held by production, the next 20 years are going to slow down significantly, and you should be working for about 20% of that. So, uh, in closing, I, I live in the middle of it. I've been there. I left my, my ranch two or three times and watched my dad. My dad watched me walk away, and I was like, part of the thing to do, went and got an education, came back. Uh, my dad was sick, came back, had to work on that ranch, could make a living. <coughs> Everybody was leaving. <coughs> Did come back. My kids watched, that. I watched them leave. They all left. And that was a sad day, so the ranch is not really taking care of business out there anymore. The industry can really be a friend to agriculture if you uh, get involved. And get involved doesn't mean complaining to your neighbors. Getting involved means getting the facts. Get to your legislature. We thank the legislature after our communities have got together, have actually been uh, receptive, keeping in mind that, uh, that they have to listen to everybody across the state. So, one of the better things that's happened is it's brought those Western counties together. We have a like, uh, a like uh, set of problems. Um, and then I just don't try to do it all on your own. Bring some, bring some help in and take control of this. I think I would have a hard time control. I don't think I can get 20 people into a room now who can walk the city because basically we're, as Tom Don, we're getting meeting dull. Everybody wants to talk now, everybody wants to come and see it, everybody wants to talk about it, and we're kind of past that way over the now. So. Anyway, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk to you. I would say you are, as communities, in a much better situation than we have been. I would, if I were you, I would not be a famous thing. I'd embrace it. As landlords, take care of business the way you do it. As a community, you've got some opportunities up here. It's, I just, the numbers don't show that you're going to be inundated like, like we have been. Uh, so that's just my personal opinion. Five years ago, the leases weren't worth the hill of beans in McKinsey County, so it shows you why. Anyway, for questions, I think you guys want to come back up and we'll